Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Brandon Aries, and welcome to the Sanctuary. I knew that eventually we would be back in this chair to talk about this sequel of sorts. Nearly everyone's favorite yellow bear, Winnie the Pooh. Last year, the very first film, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, came out. There's a card up here if you haven't seen it. I'm going to be honest with you. You really don't have to see it in order to see this movie. Because with that said, it's time to talk movie. And this week, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. That's right. Winnie the Pooh and the gang are back. Piglet is alive again. Because of the success of the first one, somehow, they got a completely new overhaul slash upgrade for the story. Winnie the Pooh looks different, Piglet looks different, Tigger is here, and Owl. Also, Christopher Robin is recast. Okay, this film definitely feels more bloody, aggressive, your typical slasher. Though at the same time, you do feel scattered concepts of whether or not this is a slasher film or a more dramatic take on Christopher Robin's backstory. So you're left feeling mixed emotions the entire time. You don't know whether you should be connected to Christopher Robin's story with his past memories, or if you should worry about the bear, tiger, owl, pig in the room. Though there were parts of it that actually felt like a slasher that was kind of scary about these characters, but then it just gets kind of boring. Owl reminds me of a makeup that I've seen on Face Off. Yeah, he's definitely going to be on the bottom this week. Who and his friends talk now, which was kind of different from the first one. There's one thing that made me laugh because of how ridiculous it was. And it was the fact that they broke the fourth wall. And I was sitting there just like, you guys know that you did this, right? But what do I know? The only other thing I will say about this fourth wall break, it's poo and time. Yep, that was a line in this movie. <laughs> Stop it! They gave Christopher Robin a lot more character development in this, which I think a lot of people were kind of confused because they were thinking, do I focus on Christopher Robin or do I focus on the killing Winnie the Pooh and friends? You know what? Do whatever you want. What do I know? I will say, though, they did a decent job at tying together all the incidents and encounters to Christopher Robin from Pooh and friends. Like each encounter throughout the movie does make its way to Christopher Robin so that he can be the stopping force. But then there's times where the momentum just drops. I have no idea how to feel about the final act. It was bloody. It was ridiculous, kind of exaggerated, and also kind of boring. The kills had no oomph. Let's just say there was blood on the dance floor. Tigger was killing it. Speaking of, let's talk about Tigger. Tigger feels like this laid back Freddy Krueger that's also part Tiger. Basically a skin from Dead by Daylight, but he has no bouncy energy. He's just kind of there like, uh, I got claws. I'm gonna stab you. Well, there is one kill where he gets like cat scratch fever, but that's it. And some of the kills when it comes to the makeup, the blood and the gore, doesn't really make a lot of sense. Who is Pooh, I guess? There aren't many things in this film that tell you who these characters are. You just have to assume. But like Tigger is Tigger because I'm told this is Tigger. Winnie the Pooh is Winnie the Pooh because this is Winnie the Pooh. And then Owl, I don't even care. When I think about Winnie the Pooh, I think about the honeypot. Oh, bother. That's what this movie is, a bother. It bothered me how much I hate it. But that's how this film feels. It feels like a bother to watch. Is it an upgrade? Sure. But there's not really any real connections that give me that sense that this is from Winnie the Pooh, which leaves me to this feeling of boredom. Like I didn't really care after it was done. I could be thinking too much into this, but at the same time, if you had this much of an overhaul, this much of an upgrade to your idea story, then I'm going to be more critical on it. Especially if you're trying to make this like the Disney horror MCU. I think Bambi is another one that's coming out and then Pinocchio where he might be wearing the skin of an actual person to be like, I'm a real boy. There were points in the movie where I felt like I was dragging myself for it to be over. And for me and movies, that is no bueno. So I'm giving Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, a 1.8 out of five. I wasn't even gonna give Blood and Honey 2 a two out of five. Get out of here. You don't deserve it. If they decide to make a third one of this, I get that it's public domain and you can kind of go about your own stories. But 
at least give us some connection to the original tales. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like the main reason why I turned it on in the first place. But that's all I got to say about Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2. Let me know if you're going to see it or if you already did see it. Put your comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to drop a like. It is always so much appreciated here in the sanctuary. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. And next to that is a notification bell for every week. This lover boy pops up in your feed. And in case this loving dad does not see you, good afternoon. Good evening and good night. Peace.